Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Southern Dirt. My name is Summer and today I'll be going over all the seeds and the transplants that you can put in your garden right now in November. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that my website is now live. You can shop southerndirtfarmandgarden.com for seeds, different products that I love and use. You'll find those affiliate links on my Shop Now page. You can register for my workshops that are done right here at my farm and garden. Also sign up for our newsletter. I send out a monthly newsletter to let you know what's going on, any new products that we are adding to the website, as well as things that I'm doing in my garden, along with our video that we post monthly. In this video, I'll also show you all the seeds and the transplants that I am planting right now in November and putting into my garden so you can follow along the season and see how they do. At the end of this video, I'll be taking you out to our pumpkin patch to show you how our seminal pumpkins are doing. We've been harvesting a ton of them, using them in the house for decorations and all kinds of fall recipes. So I hope you stick around. So now I'm gonna go over all the seeds and transplants that you can plant right now in November. I'll be going over zone 9A and zone 9B. All the details will be in the description below. We're gonna start with 9A. You can plant mustards, onions, radishes, spinach, strawberry, Swiss chard, turnips, arugula, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, Chinese cabbage, collards, endive, kale, kohlrabi, and lettuce. Now we're gonna go over 9B. We can plant mustards, onions, peas, potatoes, radish, spinach, strawberries, Swiss chard, turnips, arugula, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, Chinese cabbage, collards, endives, kale, and kohlrabi. You can also plant lettuce and sugarcane right now. So here are all the seeds I'll be starting this month. I know I told you guys last month that I would be planting beets. I never got around to it. We took a quick little trip up to the mountains and time just got away from us. So I will be planting them this month. I will also be planting broccoli some mammoth sunflower seeds. You can get both of these on the website. I will be planting Ruby Eclipse. Those were really fun last year. Um, I know it's late for squash, but I just wanna see how this butternut squash will do. I harvested that from a locally grown butternut squash. I'm gonna plant some cauliflower, some carrots we'll be putting in our new raised bed and we'll be putting some radish. I've never grown this variety before, but it looks really fun. So we'll be putting that into our raised bed as well. If you're just now joining me on my channel, we have about 1100 square feet in our backyard garden. We also have a food forest, a vineyard, and a pumpkin patch, which I'll give you an update um, out in our front yard. I also have a back barn garden, which I'll show you. Um, this all started with five tomato plants, just digging holes in our backyard, which then turned into creating a nice area for a garden over here, which wasn't enough. So I asked my husband if I can have more space. We then added um, this side to our garden area and then <laughs> I couldn't help myself. So we added this as well and then it just kept going and going and going um, this has been an exciting journey for me so every month I post updates to let you know how things are growing what is struggling I'm always looking for new video ideas so if you have any um, questions or a series that you think I should put together um, please let me know over here if you have been following me for a while you know that I've always wanted raised beds um, raised beds can be expensive and hard to build. Uh, my husband is a home builder, so anytime I talked about raised beds, he's like, honey, 
they are not going to last if we build them, even if we build them out of cedar. Cedar's expensive, especially now in COVID world. Um, it's hard to get lumber. Lumber is expensive. And of course, we don't want anything seeping into our beds. So I found a company called Vago Garden Beds, which are absolutely beautiful. They have a reflective paint on the outside that keeps the the heat from penetrating into our beds and it also has a USDA organic uh, lining inside that will never leach. Uh, none of the metals or heavy metals will leach into the garden. So um, my kids and I actually put these beds together and um, I'm going to be putting a video together of why I decided to purchase these beds. I love these beds so much that I reached out to the company to see if I can offer a discount code to my followers. They were able to sign me up for an affiliate program, which I make a small percentage off your sale. So that link is in the description below. You can save 5% off your order. You can also combine any um, promotions that they may be having going on. But I've been super excited and I can't wait to, to plant these beds. So I'm going to go over everything that I am putting into the garden here. All of my garden is 100% started from seed this year. So I'm very proud of that. It's something that we always strive to do. The only things that we actually, the only plants we actually purchased this year were plants that went into my garden tower here. And I'll show you that here in a minute. But this is a partial shade bed. So we're planting lettuces and greens in this one. So we have uh, Georgia Southern collards. I think these are actually uh, vape collards back here. I have dinosaur kale. Um, I did a dwarf kale. Um, I have never grown before. And we always grow romaine. I have uh, red romaine and just regular romaine. Now, butter crunch is a, an item that we've always grown as well, and we absolutely love it. The kids will eat it straight from the garden. And we also have bok choy. Bok choy I started growing last year, and I really enjoyed um, the flavor of that and mixing it in with our salads and stir fries. Um, over here we have a black seed Simpson. And uh, we did have some torrential rain not too long ago, which kind of pounded this area. Um, I have never planted this particular um, seed before. It does look like I've left them in the containers just a tad bit long, but that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and plant them anyways, and we will harvest all this lettuce, eat fresh salads daily. So over on this railing, I just planted some purple potted peas. They are really high climbers. They give off these beautiful purple flowers and purple pods so that will look really pretty we planted these years ago and made a little teepee for the kids and that was so much fun but i figured i really wanted to cover this area it's kind of an eyesore over here is our green stock garden which i've been super happy with you can save ten dollars off your order with my affiliate link in the description below um, i have been growing lots of stuff out of here we have some peppers that are actually ready to harvest here we have some pintas succulents I have another pepper plant back here we have tomatoes um, all kinds of different varieties I actually had some squash down here which kind of got a little sick so I replanted with peppers because my peppers are doing so well I have all kinds of herbs I've got basil rosemary thyme oregano we pretty much have a mixture of flowers vegetable plants herbs and I've loved this product so much that I actually have already staged two more areas where I have those little um, pavers of where we're gonna purchase two more and put strawberries in one and then the other one I'm actually thinking about putting all peppers or possibly peppers and lettuce um, what I like about them is you don't have to bend over a whole lot. You're keeping your vegetables off the ground. They're away from uh, pests and the kids love them, love harvesting off of them. My husband actually encouraged me to get a couple more because he likes them so much. They're just so beautiful in the garden and um, they've got a five-year warranty. Super easy product to put together, especially if you're a first-time gardener. This would be a perfect product for you. I'm going to show you um, oh, this is one of my pumpkins. 
that we purchased. We just uh, came back from a little vacation. I went to visit my mother. She lives up in North Carolina. And we went to a pumpkin farm where you could actually harvest your own pumpkins. And guys, I feel like I missed my calling of being a pumpkin farmer. It was so beautiful. It's so neat to actually go into the farm, cut your own pumpkins off the vine. And they had so many different varieties. We actually got this really cool teal one and brought home. Um, I thought about putting a little clip together of our experience there. If that's something you guys want to see, um, we visited some apple farms as well. Let me know if uh, that would interest you. I'll put it together so you can kind of see um, what we were able to experience. So this is our succulent area and um, all these succulents have been propagated from one little bunch we bought years ago um, that actually came from this pot my husband bought for um, Mother's Day and ever since I've been taking leaves cutting off pieces and making more for friends and family for gifts and more for me to enjoy over here I have some of my herb gardens I've got a mixture of different herbs in here and uh, I do plan on reorganizing my little um, wheelbarrow there with some herbs and I have some other herbs hanging over there. I'm gonna head over and show you what plants I have um, growing to go into the garden. So every month I am planting something to put into our garden. Um, since COVID and the possibility of not having a good food supply, I've been making sure that I'm keeping up with planting food throughout the season. So we could eat something if for some reason something were to happen where we didn't have food supply, that we consistently have some crop producing. And I had so much success last year and it was a learning journey for me as well, but it's actually made me a better gardener. We did not eat any canned vegetables or any vegetables from the store except for maybe a couple cans here and there. We had so much food to eat. Now, of course, we can't grow things like apples and um, different varieties of vegetables that we would buy every so often. But if we had not gone to the store, we had plenty of food here to share, not only with our family, but food to share with our neighbors if we needed to. So I do have some tomato plants uh, here. I have different varieties. I've got some mini bell. Um, I have some money maker tomatoes that are supposed to grow really well in Florida. I also have some Everglades tomatoes. So I have more vates. They're like a, they're a collar green. Um, I have dinosaur kale. I have some Siberian kale over here. These are all Everglades tomatoes. Um, recently had some, a friend that gave me some seeds to share, so I've started those. I have some fox fox glove flowers here that I'm going to probably put over in this area here. This is some celery I actually planted back all the way in September and I've given up on them and they just recently sprouted. So I'm excited about that. Um, I did start some more celery Ooh, and they're starting to sprout. Look, there they go. So these I planted in September almost a month ago. I'm sorry, October. So when I planted these in September, it may have been too hot for these to pop up. So don't give up on your seed trays if something is not coming up. Um, I've learned that over the years, I've just kind of thrown trays to the side if something didn't germinate. And then a whole entire month later, here we have seeds coming up. That's why it's so important to know what to plant and when. And you can go back and watch the whole series. Um, I have posted a video every month. Okay, so here are some Georgia Southern collards. Now I planted extras of these this year because there is a shortage of seeds. It's really hard to find seeds. So I did find a company where I purchased in bulk just for my own security. And also if any friends or anybody wanted seeds, I had them. Um, and I figured too, I might be able to start a market garden because there are restaurants in town that are contacting me and are interested in possibly purchasing food. I really haven't figured out how to do that yet um, because life is busy with four children and that is my main focus. But either way, I have started extra to see if that can um, pull together. 
I do have some, um, another planting of bok choy here. And I think that kind of covers everything here. So here is our other garden area. I've got a mixture of different sunflowers here. And in this row, I have some dwarfed curled vates. So those are gonna be interesting. I have some eggplant that my daughter actually started. My rooster is crazy today. I need to probably go down there and give them some treats. Um, so my daughter started these eggplants at one of our seed starting workshops. I figured I would plant those in, just I think a regular uh, purple variety. We have some onions that are planted right in front of them. I also have some Siberian kale here. Um, this morning I noticed that I have one that's getting ate up by worms and I figured I'm gonna sh I would keep them here so you could see them. Obviously, it's important to check on your garden daily. And I haven't checked on it in the last couple days because over the weekend we were busy, we have family in town, and look what is happening. We've got these little worms and holes all through here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna remove these and, oh, look at that, these little buggers. Because if I don't, these guys are just gonna multiply and go to the next plant, to the next plant, and before you know it, I will have no plants. So um, I do spray my garden with neem oil um, and BT. BT does help with um, these type of caterpillars or any type of caterpillars. Now it doesn't mean that they're not gonna come back, but since we did have a lot of rain, um, sometimes the product doesn't stay on as good. So you wanna make sure that you're treating um, every seven to 10 days to help manage that. Over here I have um, my grape tomatoes. These tomatoes are always gifted by a neighbor friend that is a gardener and she introduced me to these. They're yummy cherry tomatoes. Um, they're a little bit bigger than a cherry tomato. And they're just so delicious and they get super huge. We have some collard greens and onions mixed in. Um, I always plant onion bulbs between my plants. It does help um, repel some pests. They don't like the smell. Um, either way, onions don't even take up a whole lot of room, so you can uh, easily push them between plants. Um, they will grow better if they have space, but I always harvest the tops and use them just like onions in any kind of dish that we use in the kitchen. Over here, I do have some, for the variety name, Blue Dazzling Kale. I grew this last year and absolutely loved it. It's so beautiful. It gives off like this purple green flare. And then I have regular dinosaur kale over here. We had huge success with kale and collards last year. So I wanna make sure that I've got plenty um, planted. Over here, I just planted some onions. I have some kohlrabi that I'm going to put right here. They're the ones in the pots. Um, I actually planted carrots here in August all along this row. They did not germinate. It was too early. Even though it says you can plant in August, it was just too hot. So I replanted. Thankfully, this group came up, this variety did. But this variety, not so much. I had to end up I had just kind of spotty pieces of the carrots that came through and said, you know what, we're gonna wait until we get our Vago beds and I wanna be able to grow some carrots there. So I'm actually gonna be planting carrots in that Vago garden bed along with some radishes and beets. Because we have such a nice soil base compared to our ground that can leach a lot of the nutrients. We're gonna see how our carrots do compared to the regular garden in the ground to our raised beds. I'm doing that a lot with different plants just so you guys can see how much better they're going to grow in a raised bed versus in the ground. Um, over here I do have some peppers. I have uh, different mixtures. I've got banana peppers which are my absolute favorite. So we wanted to make sure we had plenty of those. I do have some pepper plants from last season that survived so I just trimmed them back. All the other ones died. It was such a hot summer. Um, but we'll give you an update to see how those are doing compared to the ones that 
we do have in that we just recently planted from seed. Over along our railing, we have beans. I have started yard beans, which we already have going everywhere. Look at this. This is awesome. So this is actually ready to harvest. We have them all over the place. I liked growing these yard beans last year because it was less harvesting. So literally, I would have to pick three green beans for one yard bean or more. So it was a lot easier for me to come out here and grab a bunch for the whole family to eat instead of trying to dig for smaller beans. So um, yard beans are super fun. I would love to grow them on an arch and have them hang down. Um, but right now, the season we're in, we've got this railing that we're growing them off of. And I can't remember what it is. So over here, we planted Kentucky Wonder Pole Beans. And we planted them about a few weeks after these beans so that we would have a continuous harvest of green beans. Our family loves green beans and they're so much better when they're freshly grown compared to your store-bought uh, green beans. Our blueberries are doing well. The type of blueberries that we have um, produce twice a year. And look at these beautiful flowers so pretty. We actually meant to uh, trim these back a while back, but by the time we were ready to, they were already putting off buds, so we did not want to do that because then we lose our um, fall production. Now I'm going to take you over to this side of the garden. Oh, before I go over there, my kids and I, while we were trimming this tree, I found all kinds of ladybug um, ladybugs and baby ladybugs, also the um, little cocoons, and check this out. So the girls and I pulled off leaves as a little experiment, and already every day there are new ladybugs hatching. Look at that. Isn't that neat? So that was super fun. If you ever have a sick tree, which this tree had a little bit of mold on it, the ladybugs were coming in to save the tree. I've actually had this happen before and I had no clue what these were. I was worried that they, the little um, cocoons may have been some kind of bug that was going to hurt our tree. And they actually came and saved the tree. So. This has been a lot of fun. The kids are enjoying coming out here every day. They're like, mommy, one's about to hatch. So that's super fun. Um, that little family event that we had. So over here, we've got some moneymaker tomatoes that are already giving off some flowers. Most all of these plants were started in August or September. Um, we did start these, let's see, in August around my birthday. So they're now just starting to flower. We've got different varieties of sunflowers over here. And um, over here I started some sunflowers that didn't make it. It was just so, um, we had some trouble obviously with this tree um, in the sun and with all the rain. There was just holding too much moisture here. So I'm leaving this area open for some of the plants over there. I do have some cabbage planted here. Um, I recently planted onions all along here. We've got some kohlrabi on both sides. And then I planted cucumbers and I'm giving them another chance and they are flowering right now. So I'm interested to see how well they grow. My youngest daughter loves cucumbers and um, I've never been successful with them at all. But it does look like they're starting to um, give off some more bugs <gasps> and look at that can y'all see that oh that's awesome so my daughter was asking me mommy where should we put the ladybugs and I said well sweetie I really think we're gonna have a hard time with this garden this side of the garden because of all the shade so I think we should put them there so any anytime one hatches she's putting it on a plant that looks sick so it's really cool it's really fun to watch them um, get involved and try to save mommy's plants. Now I'm going to take you out to the front yard pumpkin patch. 
So before I go to the pumpkin patch, I'm actually embarrassed to even show you this. This is my back barn garden that I have yet to get to. This is where my Everglades tomatoes were on and I have not done anything to this in the past couple months. But I did want to point out that my southern peas are still producing. I'm, I'm allowing the chickens to come back here and eat from this garden and I'll just harvest them. So here's our pumpkin patch in our front yard vineyard area. So we have already harvested a ton of pumpkins. And you can see I've got little pumpkins starting and I've got flowers still. So this has been super fun. If you've never grown Seminole pumpkins, they are a native pumpkin to Florida and they grow amazingly. They are a survival food. We actually just cut into some pumpkins that we grew last year, an entire year ago, that's stored in our pantry, and we just made some pumpkin soup. And if you guys want to see my recipe, um, let me know, because my kids and I have been making lots of soup, pumpkin muffins. I'll put a video together if that is actually something you guys are interested and seeing these are awesome pollinators there's a bee right there look at that oh, it's so much fun to come out here and see nature working and um, this little area over here um, we planted about a month after we planted these so that's why these are doing uh, they look a lot more lush than these do down here I'll leave them on the vine until they're completely that nice pumpkin color this one still has a little bit of green so it's got a little longer to to go now i can certainly harvest this pumpkin right now cut it um, off the vine and let it sit in the pantry or um i had a subscriber tell me that she likes to harvest them when they're green and they kind of taste like a zucchini so you can uh harvest whenever look at that we've got obviously some signs of worms this one's and i definitely need to get to spraying we've got cow thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video as always please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss another video thank you all who have recently purchased a green stock garden or a vago garden that helps my channel grow we recently reached 5,000 subscribers this past month. So that was super exciting to see. Thanks to all of you for sharing my videos and commenting below. If you know anybody in your area that would find my videos helpful, please make sure you're sharing them with your friends. And if you have any ideas for future videos or series, I'd love to hear what you would like to see in the comments below. We'll see y'all soon.